The Lime Grove Lifestyle Center in Holtown hosted a craft fair on two different weekends this December. I missed the first one, but I made sure to check out the second weekend. I was curious to see what local artisans were making and how Barbados's culture impacted their artistry and creativity. I came with high expectations and I was not disappointed. The fair turned what is normally a nicely decorated but sparsely used courtyard into a busy, energetic circle of booths covering two different floors. I've actually bought your jam before. Oh, have you? As at, uh, at Ryan's, I believe. Oh, right, right, yes. Yeah. It was st strawberry lemonade? Okay, yeah, that's I the think so. Bajan clay pottery made by Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Michelle's clay gallery. Wonderful. Bajan clay. Is That's that? Right. I wasn't aware there was a lot of clay in Barbados. Yes, there is. We have quite a big deposit in the eastern part of the country. It's called Chalky Mount. And then there are other areas of the country that have smaller deposits. But we have a very um, rich history of pottery on the island and it all centers in Chalky Mountain. Where do you get uh, inspiration for your, your artwork? Um, really my environment and also I like to think outside of the box so to speak. I don't uh, do things traditional, I just like to put my own spin on stuff. But um, it's mainly the environment, maybe uh, for example I use the ash from our volcanic ash. Oh um, yeah. When we had that problem in April, I used that and incorporated it in some place, and that's the impact that I see. So we have basically like kitchenware, wooden kitchenware, made to be, you know, used. So it's, it's functional. I like to think of it as functional art, and also a way of using wood that kind of would otherwise go to waste. Like, what kind of wood are we talking about here? Um, we have fiddle wood. Mango, sea grape, um, sapodilla, mahogany. Uh, so everybody knows about mahogany. What what's the the hidden gem? What wood is your your second favorite? Maybe behind. The... Um, there is one called um, seaside maho. Seaside. Yeah, and it, um, yeah, the wood is just gorgeous. Really nice colors. Yeah, uh, nice to work with, but it's not a very common tree, so you don't get it. Because I kind of I don't go and like cut down trees. I wait for you know either tree trimming or a tree is falling down. That's what I get. As you can see, many of the local artists use Barbados's tropical resources for their inspiration, whether it be in woodworking, scented candles, fruit juices, or organic soaps. I enjoyed walking around and talking with the people, hearing them share their story about how they started their business. A common theme mentioned was that the last two years of the pandemic created a large amount of extra free time for people, and they decided to use that time to pursue their creative passions. And others ramped up their business from part-time to full-time over the last two years. cocktails in the Casanova Liquid Artistry line. We call them Liquid Art, which is basically a line of bottled cocktails. But I like to say, why just have a drink when you can taste art? What is the difference between having a drink and tasting art? Well, when you have a drink, it's just a regular drink. When you have art, 
so much more goes into it. The whole form of it, choosing the colors, the flavors, even down to the texture. Just like when you're creating a visual art piece. The creation of the flavors usually comes from several places. So from down to the color, blue being my favorite color. Over here we have coconut and cream soda, which are two of my favorite childhood flavors. So we have vodka, coconut, cream soda here. We call it the summer cooler because it's blue in color. It has that cool look as well. And I wanted to have that fun candy taste to this one. We have the citrus blast. Of course, you know, yes, these citrus lovers. So I purposely made it green, you know, to remind you of citrus, <laughs> vegetation, the Caribbean. So this one is all citrus elements. So we have passion fruit, lemon, lime, grapefruit, with some orange as well. And the warmth of good old Barbados rum. What, what makes, you're the mixologist, correct? What makes a good mixologist, what, what do you need to succeed as a mixologist? <laughs> <laughs> well, I usually tell people, anybody can make a drink, to be honest. I can teach anyone to make a drink. Yeah. But if you ask me what makes me a good mixologist, I would say my personality, man. You definitely have to have personality, people skills. I don't want to say all wrong knowledge. You know what I mean? I just I know a bit of everything. You know, but just love the craft and personality. That's what I would say. Perfect. Um, if somebody had to try just one, what would be your go-to recommendation? Asian Ruby Punch, man. And why is that? Sorrel, dark rum spices with a touch of Casanova love, especially is this time of the year. I love it. It's my favorite because of the spices, the aromatics, and everything that comes in. The energy was great, the people were friendly, and I greatly enjoyed my time at the craft fair. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.